My name is Don Gardner, and I'm an arborist. I've been an arborist for about 40 years. I'm also a rancher. This has been a ranch for about uh, almost 150 years. For most of that time, it had way too many cows on it. This land was incredibly uh, overgrazed and eroded and very little soil left when, when we took over management of the ranch. I began to question all the things I was hearing about the cedar trees, the ash juniper trees, that they were water hogs, sucked up all the water, uh, that they weren't native. Those are two of the main things. And then over the years uh, on this ranch, which was super abused, uh, as we took the livestock off and we began to see what amazing things was happening to the land, uh, I began to even question more and more what's considered uh, common knowledge about ash juniper. Let me show you this. Right over here under this ash juniper tree, you can see this needle cast that's been happening. And you've got this lighter needles that just fell recently, but these darker needles have been here for years. And so I'm digging down here. You can see this caliche, and there's just bare rock here. Well, over here, it's actually building soil. This is a little bit of duff. It's probably only about an inch thick, but that, that will allow live oaks and Spanish oaks and buckley eye oaks and red buds and all kinds of other plants to start germinating. You cannot have nutrients in soil without organic matter. Nothing will germinate here. And so when you have bare limestone, you're not gonna have anything come in. It's just gonna be eroding and washing off. But once you start having some organic matter, and in these woods, the organic matter starts from the needle casts from the cedar trees. And then after a while, once the other trees come in, you got the organic matter from those leaves as well. The common myth is that junipers are water hogs, suck all the water out around other trees around them. Well, the truth is it's just the opposite. All junipers, and especially our ash juniper, is water thrifty. This is an area where the cedars, you can just see them, they're just all around here, have allowed these live oaks to come in. Once the live oaks come in, look, the live oaks are building soil with their leaves underneath as well. It's amazing the diversity that comes in. Here's a little bromelia or coma right here. Here's a little cedar elm coming in right here. And then right here is a persimmon that looks to be about eight or 10 years old. This is proof that the cedars aren't water hogs because if the cedars were water hogs, these other plants wouldn't even be here. We understand that the more diversity we have in the plants, the healthier the land is. And really our job is to be stewards of the land and make the land way better through managing it than it was when we started. We haven't cut any cedar down. We want every cedar to come up that can come up because we've learned that it's just making the forest come back faster and making the plants healthier. In fact, cedars should be given credit for being the main plant that's helped the hill country forest come back. Go into the future taking care of your cedar trees and understanding that the cedar trees are one of our main native trees in Central Texas that we need to take care of.